One Zambia, One Nation, good evening and welcome to the news on TV2 at 18 hours. My name is Nawalia Plahakis. Let's take a look at the headlines. The case in which UPND President Haka Indehichilema challenged the re-election of President Edgar Lungu as president has collapsed. Secretary to the Cabinet, Roland Msiska, says President Edgar Lungu and his running mate, Inonge Winner, will be inaugurated on Tuesday, September 13, 2016. In sports news, the Confederation of African Football CAF has proposed changes to Hero Stadium before it can host any games during the under-20 AFCON, which Zambia will host next year. And now the news in detail. The case in which UPND President Haga Indehijilema challenged the re-election of Edgar Lungu as president has collapsed. This means that President Edgar Lungu will now be sworn in as president because the decision of the Constitutional Court is final. When the matter came up today, the court said, as far as it is concerned, there is no petition to determine because its jurisdiction to hear the matter ended at midnight on Friday. Justice Annie Sitali said the Constitution provides that a petition is heard within 14 days and not beyond. She said because of the time limits, the order given by the court for trial to continue this week was not tenable. Meanwhile, the court also expressed its displeasure with the conduct of lawyers representing Mr. Hegelema. Hector Simfoque gives us more details in this report. The Constitutional Court has finally provided guidance on the election petition by UPND President Akainde Chilema, who has challenged the election of President Edgar Lungu. This was after three out of five judges decided that the court has no jurisdiction to hear the matter beyond the prescribed 14 days. This is despite the Constitutional Court having extended the time limit of hearing the matter to this week. Immediately after the judges walked in, petitioner's lawyer Vincent Malambo apologized on behalf of his colleagues who allegedly dressed down the court on Friday. In its ruling, the court expressed sadness with the conduct of the petitioner's lawyers, who included John Sangwa, Matham Shipe Gilbert Piri, Robert Simenza, Jack Mwimbo and Marshall Mchende, among others. The court further advised the Law Association of Zambia to take action against Ms. Mushipe. The respondents' lawyers, who included Eric Suruamba, Abudi Shonga, Joseph Jalasi, Sakuba Scott, among others, were not in court because the court had no jurisdiction to hear the matter. Speaking when she delivered the judgment, Justice Anne Sitari said the petitioner's lawyers were not ready to start trial, as can be seen from their conduct. The court said apart from failing to bring the witnesses who are based in Lusaka, the petitioners wasted their time by making so many applications. Justice Sitali said the court has no jurisdiction to hear the matter beyond the stipulated 14 days as provided for in the constitution. She said in the absence of evidence, the court cannot make a ruling on the matter. She said as far as the court is concerned, there is no petition to determine as the 14 days limit elapsed on Friday last week. Meanwhile, Justice Margaret Munarula and the court president were allowed to give dissenting judgments. The two felt the court should have allowed the parties in the matter to present their case before making a determination. Later, Attorney General Rikando Kararuka welcomed the court's position on the matter. Hector Simfokwe, TV2 News in Lusaka. And United Party for National Development, UPND President Haga Indehichilema and Party Vice President for Administration, Geoffrey Mwamba, refused to be interviewed by journalists after the court's decision to dismiss the petition. Mr. Hichilema was surrounded by his security men who whisked him away from journalists. Mr. Hichilema and Party Vice President for Administration, Mr. Mwamba, who was his running mate, were the petitioners of the 2016 presidential election. Meanwhile, Attorney General Likando Kalaluka has welcomed the dismissal of the 2016 presidential election petition. Yeah, I think ultimately the majority of the court has, has seen the position which the state has been saying that uh, I think the, the petition has to be heard within 14 days and there is no discretion on the part of the court. So we are very happy that... Uh, the rule of law has prevailed and indeed democracy has ultimately prevailed. The Bill of Rights has always taken into account in the sense that uh, all the Bill of Rights says that there should be trial within a reasonable period. 
the court did refer to Article 267, which says that uh, the court should consider the Bill of Rights and also the purposes and values of the Constitution. For purposes of a presidential petition, the Constitution says that it's 14 days. So I think ultimately it's, the majority has, ru has ruled both in terms of the court decision and also in terms of uh, the decision of the people. And Paramount Chief Chitimokulu of the Bemba people has praised the Constitutional Court for upholding the re-election of President Lungu. The Chitimokulu observed that the court ruling has shown that the country's democracy is moving forward. Zanis reports that the Paramount Chief has since urged Zambians to respect the decision of the Constitutional Court and continue promoting national peace and unity in the country. Meanwhile, the MMD has welcomed the decision of the Constitutional Court to dismiss the petition by the UPND against the re-election of President Edgar Lungu. MMD President Felix Mutati said the decision of the Constitutional Court has come as a big relief to the people of Zambia who have patiently waited for the outcome of the presidential petition. A governance activist says the new parliament and executive wing of government should look at the grey areas in the constitution. Ruben Lifoka says this is the first time that Zambians have experienced this kind of an election where they have had to wait for a constitutional court ruling within a specified time following a presidential petition. And Zambia Election Information Center program manager Gilles Kasongo has welcomed the ruling by the constitution court. The two were speaking in separate interviews with TV2 News. Meanwhile, some Lusaka residents are happy that the presidential petition case has been concluded, noting that they can now move on with their lives. Ruth Kamwe gives us details in this report. A spirit of calmness and peace is hovering around Zambia. This can be seen in the manner in which people have gone about with their businesses after a ruling in the presidential petition by the Constitution Court. It is also apparent that celebrations are ongoing in some sections of the community. The Zambian people are happy that their uncertainty on what route the country would take has now been cleared. As, now, as at now, we are happy, at least we, uh, we can wait, we can do one or two things. The business was shut down, things weren't, was not going well, so we hope things will come to normal. Uh, now that uh, they have dismissed, this shows now that uh, the confidence that we have in our leader can now be seen. For governance activist Ruben Lifuka, this is time to move forward and work towards one Zambia, one nation. He wants the new parliament and executive wing of government to address the gray areas in the constitution. But because we have a document and a document that has been amended, we can now, in hindsight, look at where it is working well and not working well. Clearly, when it comes to petitions before the constitutional court, there are a number of gray areas which we need to attend to. The definition of what 14 days is needs to be attended to. It needs to be more explicit, as the case is with the Electoral Process Act, where with parliamentarians who petition their cases, the act is quite clear when the case will be heard and determined. It's 90 days. At the expiry of the 90 days, a petitioner knows that they have failed to prosecute the case, and the case fails on lack of uh, prosecution. I think we need a similar provision in the petition for uh, at the presidential level. And Zambia Election Information Center program manager Gilles Kasongo has welcomed the ruling by the Constitution Court. Mr. Kasongo has however noted that the center is yet to conclude its report of the entire electoral process. We hope we can quickly sit down and finalize our position. There is an analysis paper that we are finalizing, um, which is looking at the entire electoral cycle. You may be aware that pre-polling day, during the pre-election period, um, there were a number of issues that people raised. It After all is said and done, stakeholders want to see a united Zambia. Ruth Kamwe, TV2 News in Lusaka. 
Meanwhile, Secretary to Cabinet Dr. Roland Msiska says President-elect Edgar Lungu and his running mate Inonga winner will be inaugurated on Tuesday, September 13, 2016. This follows the decision of the Constitutional Court to dismiss the petition. Dr. Msiska says the inauguration ceremony will be held at the National Hero Stadium in Lusaka. Dr. Msiska told TV2 News in a statement that all committees involved in the organization of the function have been activated. He says cabinet office will therefore proceed to prepare for the inauguration of the president-elect and the vice president. We take a break and still to come in the news, Chinese president congratulates president-elect Edgar Lungu on his re-election and residents resort to unconventional methods of accessing water. Stay with us. Welcome back. We continue with the news. Chinese President Xi Jinping says he is confident that Zambia, under the continued leadership of President Edgar Lungu, will record new and greater achievements in national development. In his congratulatory message to President Lungu, the Chinese leader pledged to continue working with President Lungu to further strengthen the bilateral relations between China and Zambia. President Xi says he is ready to work with President Lungu to take the implementation of consensus and the outcomes of the previous meetings he held with President Lungu at the Fokak Johannesburg Summit. Meanwhile, the Arab Bank for Economic Development in Africa, Badea, has extended heartfelt congratulations to President-elect Edgar Lungu on his re-election. Badea Director General C.D. Aud Tar says the bank hopes that Zambia under President Lungu's wise leadership will proceed on the path of progress and prosperity. Dr. Ta has assured President Lungo that Badea will spare no effort to promote and consolidate the developed cooperation between Zambia and the bank. This is contained in a letter addressed to the president dated 25th August 2016 and sent from the bank's headquarters in the capital city of the Republic of Sudan, Khartoum. This is according to a statement availed to TV2 News by Special Assistant to the President for Public Press and Public Relations, Amos Chanda. Badea is a financial institution owned by 18 Arab countries who are members of the League of Arab States. The bank began its operations in March 1975 following the resolution of the 6th Arab Summit Conference in Algiers on 28th November 1973. Muchinga Province Permanent Secretary Bright Nundwe has advised all churches putting up structures to engage experts to avoid accidents. This follows the collapse of a Seventh-day Adventist camp shelter on Saturday, which claimed two lives and others injured. Mr. Nundwe says government does not find pleasure when calamities before the church. Meanwhile, the Permanent Secretary has revealed that at least six people are still receiving treatment at Chinsali District Community Hospital, while several others have been discharged. People were involved in a very fatal accident within the building. The building collapsed. And out of the 42, uh, two people have died. A child aged three and a woman aged 38. Uh, I would like to give a piece of advice uh, to all the churches in Mchinga province that as we are putting up these structures, we need to involve the architectures, we need to involve the planners, we need to do quality job and the proportions in terms of the mixture of river sand, building sand and cement should be done appropriately. What I saw on the site after visiting the entire site to me, the foundation itself was too shallow and the mixture of cement with the building materials was not all that all right. As government is heartbreaking, we are shocked with what happened on Saturday. The water crisis that has persisted in many parts of Lusaka has forced some residents to seek unconventional means of getting the commodity. A check by TV2 News in some parts of Mtendere, PHI and Avondale has revealed that some people have gone without the commodity for more than 24 hours, while in extreme cases, people have been without water for weeks. Martha Banda, a resident of Mtendere, says the problem has forced some people in her neighborhood to vandalize a water line in 
order to get the commodity. But Lusaka Water and Storage Company Public Relations Manager Topsi Segalinda has called for patience among affected residents as a new water project under the Millennium Challenge account will create a lasting solution. Penlop Sikazwe now reports. It is around 10 hours and the September heat is already showing promise of revealing its potential. A boy trudges forward with his bicycle heavily laden with buckets in search of something many people want, water. Some parts of Avondale, Chelson and Mtendere are among the areas affected. The women I talked to in Mtendere compound and PHI in particular are fed up. And you can imagine PHI there's no, no we have toilets inside the houses and we cannot manage. We get water from the, the person has got a bottle. The problem is that we have to get water from the person who has got a bottle. We have to get water from the person who has got a bottle. So, we have to get water from the person who has got a bottle. But we have to get water from the person who has got a bottle. This woman and some people around her have decided to take matters in their own hands. Their argument is simple. If the relevant authorities delay to deliver, they will take matters in their own hands. And that is exactly what we found them doing. Lusaka Water and Storage Company is aware of the persistent problem. Company Public Relations Manager Topsy Sikalinda assured this reporter on phone of long-term solutions. He says works to rectify the problem under the water project in the Millennium Challenge account have continued. He says works are also underway in Chelston and Avondale. This assurance is good for the ears and some residents of affected areas have expressed hope that this statement on interventions is more than just an ear-tickling promise. Penlopsi Gazwe, TV2 News, Lusaka. A good Samaritan of Lusaka's Kanyama site and service compound is keeping a child believed to be between four and five years old. Mutinta Monga says Masia Piri was following her after a church service on Saturday around 13 hours. Masia is light in complexion and is dressed in a blue truck bottom and a white and yellow striped t-shirt. Ms. Monga says efforts to locate the family have failed as he has only identified his mother as Amake Membe. She has appealed to anyone with information on the whereabouts of the family to report to the nearest police station or call the number 0975-438-8000. Meanwhile, a 20-year-old boy of Lusaka's Kamanga overspill compound has gone missing. Thomas Azimba went missing on Saturday, 3rd September, around 14 hours. His sister, Sabeta Nurenda, says at the time of his disappearance, he was wearing a black shirt and blue sneakers. Nurenda says Thomas was last year diagnosed with a mental problem. She has appealed to anyone with information to report to the nearest police station or call the number 0979-765-700 or 0979-165-358. We take another break. Join us for the sports segment as well as foreign news in a while. In foreign news, an unknown number of inmates have died after a fire at an Ethiopian prison where prominent anti-government protesters are reportedly being held. Local media reports that sustained gunfire could be heard coming from Kilinto prison on the outskirts of the capital Addis Ababa after the fire broke out. The government confirms some deaths, while local media report that at least 20 people had died in the incident. There has been an unprecedented wave of protests in Ethiopia in recent months. Reports that the fire was started deliberately as part of an attempted jailbreak have not been independently verified. There have been numerous protests in the Oromia region by members of the country's largest ethnic group since November 2015. 
We now have the sports segment and on the sports segment today, CAF proposes changes to Hero Stadium and Uganda's cranes clinch sport in the AFCON for the first time in 38 years. Stay tuned. Good evening with the sports segment. My name is Katu Shibwade. We go straight into the details. The Confederation of African Football CAF has proposed changes to Heroes National Stadium in Osaka before it can host any games during the Under-20 Africa Cup of Nations, which Zambia will host next year. CAF Executive Committee member Amadou Diakite, who is leading a six-member CAF inspection team, said small modifications need to be made to the stadium before it can host any international match. Diakite says he will soon send a list of recommendations to government on things that were omitted when the stadium was being constructed. We have more details in this report. This is a team of inspectors from the Confederation of African Football, CAF. The team, led by Amadou Diakite, is in the country to check on Zambia's readiness to host the 2017 Under-20 Africa Cup of Nations. The team has called on Sports Permanent Secretary Agnes Musunga. The team is happy with the country's stadia, hotels and the transport system. No major problems. Les hôtels, les terrains d'entraînement et le stade national hero. Hotels and training pitches and and uh, the hero stadium. Le pont au nord. Um, um, conform to the to the standards of CAF. And the team has proposed minor changes to the National Hero Stadium in Osaka. The changes should be made before the country hosts the game. So we will make uh, some changes. On va donner au, à la direction du stade. These changes will be communicated to the to the stadium, uh, and it, it doesn't uh, require any uh, constructions. It, there are only some uh, some small modifications and in placements that just changes. And Mrs. Musunga says the country is ready to host the games. After the inspection, and so that we can really just fine tune and make sure everything is okay. Just be assured that we we'll do everything possible to make this a success. The team is expected to take another trip to Zambia to make sure the country has worked on the recommendations. Katushi Wadia, TV2 Sport in Lusaka. To rugby now, Green Eagles Rugby Club are the winners of the 2016 Heroes Sevens Rugby Tournament played in Kawe. This was after they beat Diggers A 15-0 in the final to claim the 10,000 Kwacha prize money. Eagles scored their tries through Mado Nirongo, Tedias Chipoya and Malamach Leshe to silence Diggers. Lo losing semi-finalist Arrows B beating Kwasi A 17-5 to, to win the played final and walked away with 5,000 kwacha prize money. In the women's category, Eagles A beat Eagles B 12 nil to claim first position and pocket to pocket 3,000 kwacha. Tidias Chipoya won the player of the tournament award, while Melvis Mwepuemu won the female player of the tournament award. Finally, in sport, Uganda has qualified for the Africa Cup of Nations for the first time since 1978 after they beat Comoros on Sunday. Their one new victory secured their place at next year's finals in Gabon as one of the best two group runners up. Group D rivals Burkina Faso have also qualified with a late 2 1 win over Botswana to finish top of the table. Tunisia and Diara Congo qualified as winners of their groups, and Togo went through as the second best group runners up on goal difference. 16 teams will compete at next year's tournament, which runs from 14th January to 5th February, the 13 group winners and two best group runners-up plus host Gabon. 
Algeria, Cameroon, Egypt, Ghana, Guinea-Bissau, Ivory Coast, Mali, Morocco, Senegal, and Zimbabwe had booked their places before yesterday's games. Uganda's last appearance at the Nations Cup in 1978 ended in a runners-up sport when they lost to Ghana in the finals. Well, it's unfortunate that the Chipotle boys will not be in Gabon. And on that note, we end the sports segment. Thank you so much for your company. We now join Nawalia with the news headlines. From me, it's Konat. Thank you so much, Katui, for giving us the details and sports news. And now to end the news, we take a look at the headlines once again. The case in which UPND President Haka Indehichilema challenged the re-election of Edgar Lungu as president has collapsed. This means that President Lungu will now be sworn in as president because the decision of the Constitutional Court is final. And Secretary to the Cabinet, Roland Msiska, says President Edgar Lungu and his running met Inonge winner will be inaugurated on Tuesday, September 13, 2016. This follows the decision of the Constitutional Court to dismiss the petition. The Confederation of African Football, CAF, has proposed changes to Heroes National Stadium before it can host any games during the under-20 AFCON, which Zambia will host next year. CAF Executive Committee member Amadou Diadu Diakite, who is leading a six-member CAF inspection team, said small modifications need to be made to the stadium before it can host any international match. Well, that's it for the news at 18 hours. I'll be back with more news at 20 hours. My name is Nawalia Plahakis. Thank you so much for watching and God bless.